Hello and welcome to a video on TCGplayer.com. My name is Steve Rubin. Uh, this week I decided to do something a little different. Instead of going into Magic Online, I wanted to take a moment to talk about uh, MTG Arena, which is a product that uh, we have known about as Magic players for maybe over the maybe a little bit over a year. It's been hyped up for a while, and I believe last Thursday the NDA, the Non-Disclosure Agreement, was lifted. It's clear that Wizards feels comfortable enough with their product to kind of, even though it's still in closed beta, they want to get more eyes on it, perhaps to build hype or to perhaps just to, just so people know what's going on. It is definitely cleaner than Magic Online, but yeah, just a lot of people have been pretty disappointed about it. You know, it was supposed to kind of be this next big thing, and Wizards is clearly putting a lot of money, time, and effort into it. Um, we saw last year Chris Cooks, the new president of Wizards of the Coast, who who has a digital background, is coming in, and he's created an entirely new digital team. Uh, some of this I covered in, in an article I wrote a while back called The Bands and the Future, which was kind of about the weird bannings of Ferocidon uh, and Ramanap Ruins and Rogue Refiner, and I think Attune with Aether was the other card that was banned, and I just kind of went over, oh, it's interesting that they're making all these bands in Standard, because now, you know, if they're going for a, a digital audience... Right, maybe in the future we'll see kind of uh, some people at Wizards making changes or tweaking cards like they do in Hearthstone, where they actually don't ban a card, but they change how it works. Anyway, go check that article out if you haven't seen it. Um, if you don't really know that much about Magic Arena, I know that Corbin went ahead and he made a video, you know, just playing some, I don't know how many rounds, but if you just want to get a feel for what it looks like, definitely check that out. I, I think that um, a lot of this negativity is at this point getting more and more warranted and it's very worrisome to see so much time and effort put into arena when their end product is not necessarily that much different than magic online yes i think that it's the barrier for entry is going to be a lot lower for arena um it's going to be a lot cheaper to play it's it kind of a cool system where you get um if you get like a rare you get like a rare card like, you don't get a rare, but you get that, and you can trade it in for any rare. So it's actually easier to build a deck on Arena a little bit, and everyone starts at the same playing field. So I think, like, right now, when they reset everybody's accounts after the NDA was lifted, um, there's a lot of, like, scrappy battling with, like, bad decks, which is, which is kind of fun. But basically, I think that that is where Arena's going to shine in that market of, you know, Magic players who are pretty casual. Um, they do want to maybe play at home, or importantly, on their phone. I mean, it's going to be really big to see if it's going to be playable on your phone and to what extent, but that's the market that um, WotC can kind of win over here. They can win over the casual players who love Magic. They want to play more Magic, but Magic Online has too big of a barrier for entry. So that said, I think, you know, they may be doing a good job. They may not be. Um, part of the reason that I think they may not be is that there are, isn't really that much support that's going to come through from these players to kind of be like diehard arena players. It's pretty easy to sort of start playing something like arena on your phone and like start grinding only to kind of get bored with it over time. Obviously that happens with a lot of stuff, but one of the reasons that magic is so great is kind of the social aspect of magic. And Magic the game itself is like a little bit outdated. Obviously, it's still the best card game and it's still kind of that prominent figure among card games and even like digital card games. You know, a lot of people who play Hearthstone, who play Elder Scrolls, obviously Eternal is very similar to Magic. Same thing with Hex. Um, there's like Shadowverse. Now, all these games, you know, are kind of somewhat loosely based on Magic, right? Magic is still kind of king, but... In this new digital world, they're kind of losing ground. Like, over time, every year that goes by, they haven't really produced anything in the digital world that's, like, hurting Magic. Which is kind of weird, because technically Magic, to me, is more of a tabletop game. It's a game that you are playing with other people and being social, and playing with, like, two to four to, like, eight people, right? If you're in a draft, you're there with eight people. And I think that that's something that a lot of these digital card games can't really catch up to. But at the same time, when Magic is moving to the digital space, it's just not designed for that, right? Magic was designed a long time ago. Whenever you do anything, there can be a reaction. Oftentimes, like, 
eight to ten times in a turn. I forget exactly how many times you have priority, but if I look on Magic Online, you know, I think there's like maybe eight different points in a turn. It's in that range of how many times per turn you can interact, and the percentage of those windows that are actually used is quite low. So say like in a turn, I've got ten points of priority during my opponent's turn, and I might be only using those windows like five percent of the time if I'm doing like once every other turn, basically. Uh, and that just creates a lot of clicking, a lot of waiting, a lot of pass back and forth. And Arena, you know, is basically just magic. It's the same exact thing as magic, right? Obviously, it's a little different because it's on the digital space, but it is the game of magic, which is designed to be an in-person card game, which in the past, we've kind of seen that it doesn't really translate that well online. And the fact that they already had magic online and are kind of like, hey, look, here's this new thing that you can do. While it is cool for those of us who want a lower barrier of entry to play on magic online, I think that in general, the direction that magic needs to take in order to kind of catch up in the digital world it is a bit different. Like when they announced MTG Digital Next, I had assumed that they were making a Hearthstone, right? I assumed that they were going to simplify magic. I don't know exactly what this meant. Maybe you play as a Planeswalker and you have like abilities you can use every turn from the start of the game. Maybe it still involves like the magic cards you see every day, except just in a different shell. Maybe they're completely different cards. Uh, maybe, maybe they do away with the, the mana system that they have and have a more automatic kind of thing. Uh, that kind of thing is what I popped into my head and I was super excited. I was like, oh my God. They're going to come out with, like, their version of Hearthstone, better late than never. Um, it's going to let me play on my phone. It's going to let me kind of dig into Magic online. Um, while I do like Magic, you know, Magic Magic, actual, actual Magic the Gathering, like, I always have that, right? I always have the opportunity to play Magic online if I need to prepare for a tournament, go to the local store if I need to prepare for, for a tournament, you know, fly or drive to a GP if there's one in my area. Like, that's all stuff that I can do already. And I think that just adding a kind of more flashy version of that is definitely something that's like, seems like it would be a good idea because, you know, obviously you want to promote yourself in the digital space and you want your game to be able to play on the phone and i think that magic digital next or sorry magic arena is like is good right uh, the problem is where is the barrier for entry to magic and while on and now while on uh sorry arena the barrier for entry is lower and a little bit easier ways of getting cards like you don't have to buy like a 300 dollars standard deck or pay like 15 dollars for a tournament or whatever the problem still is basically what I just said is complexity is we're not actually taking away complexity from magic, right? We're, we're leaving it exactly where it is, which while the barrier for entry might've been pulled down, it's still pretty high because you still need to know all the rules. And when I'm talking about it, like people wanting to download and play your game who haven't played it before, they're just going to either not going to do it or they're going to try it and get frustrated because they're not necessarily going to be good at it right away. They're not going to underst even understand it enough to play. And I think that, you know, Wizards of the Coast is kind of just okay with continuing their kind of like protect the queen strategy where they just know magic is a great game. They know it's one of the best games there is and they're not going to mess with it. They're just going to continue to kind of, uh, shelter it they, they want to ensure that uh magic lives for a very long time but not necessarily that magic like becomes a huge thing right and and, and more and more people play it uh, there are more and more versions of magic there are more and more tournaments for magic there are bigger prizes uh, there are more people attending those tournaments that that kind of stuff like yeah is in there kind of like yeah we kind of want this but they're definitely prioritizing that like okay we need magic to stay safe and I said this in my previous article, so sorry for those of you who read that and, and were kind of like, you're repeating yourself, but it's important to say that, I mean, Magic is what? It's going to be 26 years old, and like they've done a pretty good job of keeping a game alive that long. Like, it doesn't, that's not something to kind of scoff at, right? It's kind of a situation where a lot of people miss the fact that, yeah, they've actually just kept this game afloat where other games have died, right? Like, versus. Um, Kai Judo, stuff like that, uh, World of Warcraft trading cards. Like, these games just die, and it's oftentimes pretty hard to, to stay afloat. So they have done that well. Definitely thumbs up for Wizards. 
Uh, so it's easy to kind of nitpick on them and be like, oh, they need to do more, they need to do more. The way I see it is that they are still doing that. And according to what I've seen, like Chris Cook say, is like Magic Digital Next is kind of like, or sorry, Magic, they're like digital projects basically, are something new. And they don't necessarily have to like work off what they already have. And uh, not to repeat myself, but I, I just I just really feel as if that this pro project, I guess I would say, like the entirety of making this is kind of on false pretenses, right? Of like, people will now play more magic and that like people will play it on their phone and people will play, you know, people who didn't play magic online will now play it when they've kind of missed the whole idea of, you know, changing their game and potentially making a new game, right? And like with the Magic the Gathering world and with like the rules they already have in place, they can make a new game. So anyway, sorry for that. Uh, continuing on, uh, I, I've definitely seen that some people's reactions to Magic Arena, I think it's pretty important to bring up, like, for instance, uh, uh, notably John Finkel and, and, and Kai, uh, both on Twitter saying that, wow, Magic Arena is, is really bad, it's like beyond what they expected, they thought it would be, their expectations were low, and then it was like even worse than that, um, and just kind of want to respond to that really quick and just say that, I mean, yeah, it's a pretty big deal when your flagship, like your two best, like your two best and most famous players ever are pretty much saying that they would never play this. Um, is that de is definitely a big hit and something that is like we need to identify right away. Like if I'm Wizards, I I'm definitely not happy to see that. And somebody like even I, I saw Kenji, uh, Numa, or people know him as Numa the Nummy, uh, is after he, like, at the beginning of Arena, he was one of their flagship people who, like, was like, oh, you know, like, like, like I'm gonna play Arena, check it out, and, uh, now he's kind of reneged, and he's saying, not, not that he was necessarily, like, he wanted to try it, he didn't know what it was gonna be like, but it just ended up not hitting it for him, and I think that that is, is, is big, because that's your streamer, if you're, if, if you're saying that you want your game to be more streamable, and he's kind of saying that, hey, look, like this game, uh, this this new thing you have is, isn't that great. Um, and this kind of brings me into what kind of inspired me to do this video was, uh, I don't know if you, not all of you may know in the Magic World, but there's this guy named Crip, and he is a Hearthstone professional streamer. So he, he, he does mostly limited, but he also plays some constructed. And he's a player that uh, has played Magic apparently for a long time. I think he said he some, said something like he uh, was introduced to it in Weatherlight, and he actually did a 15 hours of MTG Arena. So if you were on Twitch, you probably saw at one point, you know, some guy with like 8,000 viewers playing Magic Arena, and it was pretty cool to see him play. You know, somebody who hadn't played in a long time, something like maybe like 10 years since he had like played at all seriously, and he, he you know, he actually watching his video. I definitely recommend everyone watch it. Um, there's a ton of interesting stuff there, and he made a lot of good and bad points about it. And one of the points that he immediately came to was that, you know, Magic is still a great game, but Arena is not giving us anything new. If there was something new here, then I think a lot more people would try it. And he said something that I would never heard anybody say, and he said that, yeah, he actually doesn't mind uh, the land system in Magic. It's, it's actually kind of cool how lands work. And how you can interact with them as permanents, which you can't do in most other uh, digital card games. So it's kind of cool to see that perspective. But then he says that the biggest issue he has is in the mulliganing, right? Pretty much every single digital card game, you get whatever your opening hand is, and then you can select any number of them to mulligan. And the, and one of the things about Paper Magic is we just have the, no, you have to mulligan your entire hand, and then you get six random new cards. And this is actually funny because one of the best changes that Wizards have done over the course of the last maybe like five, just five years, like ballpark, is the Vancouver Scry 1 mulligan rule. When, when they went and they improved mulligans, that just made Magic better for everybody. So changes in that direction are awesome. And the idea that Magic Arena could actually still be close to Magic, like my, my, my opinion is that Magic Arena should be more like Hearthstone, but if they're going with the model where Magic Arena would still be like magic, then I think um, if they implemented some new uh, mulligan rules, that could potentially be like the, oh, wow, they're actually, you know, the new hook that would get people to play. Uh, for instance, like 
if that same Hearthstone player heard they're improving the kind of archaic mulliganing system and they're going ahead and making it, you know, more friendly in the digital space, making more games playable, um, that would, while I'm not saying that would pull them, and it probably wouldn't for most people, maybe it would pull like 5% of those kind of players, uh, as opposed to zero, but it definitely is that step in the right direction. And the other thing is if I told Kai and John that, okay, you could play this Pro Tour like normal in Paper Magic, or you could play on Arena where during the mulliganing process, instead of going down to six cards, you could remove three cards from your hand and redraw three cards. I'm pretty sure that would make them a lot more excited to play on Arena, right? People would be like, oh, wow, yeah, of course we should play Pro Tours on Arena. The mulliganing system is better. There's less variance. There's more exciting games. There's less, like, you know, just games that are decided by whether lands and spells are drawn in, in the right order, you know, in the right consistency. And that would be an awesome change. And I think that uh, that itself would make Magic more viewable, right? Because we're playing on Arena and we have these kind of new rules. Well... My example of like, oh, shipping three cards in your back is pretty intense. I think that the Vancouver Scry rule set the precedent completely for like, oh, maybe this is the weakness in our game. And one of the things that Crips said, I'm pretty excited I watched that video because one of the things he said is like, yeah, I don't actually mind getting like flooded or screwed that much, but if I could just kind of manipulate the cards I started with a little bit more, it would feel a lot less bad when I did, right? Because I could actually control that a little more. And I think that that's a super interesting direction that Wizards might be able to take. And, you know, maybe that would be their hook without a hook. <laughs> as, as in like, if they're not making some new version of Magic, maybe they can just kind of improve what they have because on digital space, you know, it doesn't really cost them anything. And if that experiment doesn't work, that experiment doesn't work and they, and, and they can change it after the fact um, or even test it beforehand and, and see what's up. So that's pretty much what I wanted to say through this video. I'm very interested in what they're going to do with Arena now that like some of their marquee pros have said they don't really like it. Obviously, it's still in closed beta, so there's going to be a lot more like bells and whistles. I think that playing Magic on your phone... Uh, is something that doesn't necessarily excite me, but I can understand why that's important. And I think that, you know, hopefully they get it done because that's going to be a big win for them when they do. I'd be pretty excited if they made rules changes, especially in mulliganing. I think that would definitely, definitely get me to play Arena, right? Like if I was like, oh, do you want the Pro Tour in paper or do you want it in Arena where you have like super mulligans? I would be like, I'm in, you know, I'm definitely going to learn how to play Arena now. Give me that in while I don't, you know, want to be forced to do something, which is something that happens a lot in Pro Magic, like you're forced to go to a tournament, or you're forced to play like the broken cards in Standard, etc. Um, I, while I don't want that to happen for learning Arena, you know, if you make Arena good enough, maybe with enough repetitions, people will like it because, like when I first play, started playing Magic online, and sorry, I was I was ending the video, but I went into another ramp. But when I first started playing Magic Online, I played really badly. Like, you know, I missed my combat steps. I misclicked. Like, I just made mistakes because I was concentrating on, like, the turn structure more than actually playing Magic. Um, but over time, I just kind of overcame it. Maybe that's something that will happen with Arena. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Uh, definitely, definitely check out the Crypt video. Uh, I think it's called twenty one My 21 Years of Magic. Also, go ahead and... Uh, if you haven't seen Arena, take a look at it. Apply for the beta, because I definitely don't want you to necessarily form opinions without playing it. Um, if you go to a Grand Prix, sometimes they have Arena booths set up. So uh, thank you for tuning in. Uh, if you like this kind of content, let me know, because this is new for me. And see you guys later.